Hello, sweet cheeks. How are you? What's that? You're sending me someone, and they're a mega VIP, and they want to what? Well, yeah, of course I've got one of those, obviously, of course I have. Honestly, Justin, I, I thought he was dead. Oh, he's not. He's just living with Michael Jackson. Right, okay. Michael's not coming as well, is he? Uh, nope. Oh, no. All right, so it'll just be him. All right. Yeah, no, we can do that, mate. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, we'll be waiting. Tony? Tony? Where's he gone? Tony? <laughs> there you are, mate. Now, listen, we've got a VIP coming. Uh, Justin's sending him over. So I need you to stop reading your book. I know you like your book. Stop reading your book. Um, you need to have a wash, get everything tidied up because someone special's coming. All right, mate, off you go. Anybody got a burger? Haven't eaten in five minutes. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. Welcome to Egg and 101 Shop. I hear through Justin, you're looking for an air rifle. Uh-huh. And I, look, Tony, Tony, no, 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 no. He doesn't want that, all right? Put it away. I think we've got something a lot better for you. <laughs> this is the brand new FX King. Uh-huh. Now this is sub 12, 177. Uh -huh. So in the UK, this is license free. Uh -huh. And that's a really good thing for you because no one's actually gonna know you've got it or that you're even alive. Uh-huh. There we are, sir. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. This is the FX King. It's the latest incarnation from FX Air Guns of Sweden. And yep, you will recognize the heart of the air gun. It's heavily based on the Panthera. I'm not gonna lie to you and say, it's an all new special edition or it's got magical changes. No, nope, it's a version of the Panthera. But what a beauty it is. This has the looks of a traditional sporting rifle with that GRS laminate stock, which I have to say has a matte finish rather than gloss. To be clear, this is the green mountain camo 177 sub 12 foot pound version, which means it has the 500 mil barrel with the pellet liner on it. Different lengths in higher power are available. I don't have any of those. So all I'll say is this is the UK sub 12 foot pound version. And that's what I'm going to concentrate on in this video. You can check out the FX Airgun's main website for all the specs on the other models. And I ain't sitting and reading all those out, or I would be here all day, and you'd lose your bucket, and I would be burning pointless calories. But they did call one model the brown. Brown. Now, Ted made a good point, 100% agreed. The marketing department had a day off when they named the one model brown. Well, that's just killed the brown model sales, hasn't it, really? Uh, you could always call it natural, or maybe Greta Thunberg's garden tree, but not brown. If you've got any ideas on what to call the brown one, you can always put them in the comments below. It does not arrive completely like this. I have added the scope, the mounts, the bipod, uh, the clamp, uh, the chrono that you'll see in the video in the chrono pole and the moderator. Um, but it does come in a nice hard case with a filling adapter, one magazine and an instruction manual. Starting at the dangerous end then, the overall closed length of the rifle minus the moderator is 97 centimeters and the shroud width is approximately 34 mils wide. It's bigger than the impact or the crown style as it has the plenum at the very front next to the block. 
Now we are UK license free here with this rifle, so the plenum is very, very small, 42 mil in length. And I believe it's sub 20 cc there or thereabouts in air capacity. While it's not giving huge power reserves in that configuration, it is allowing the short impulse valve in the dynamic block to give better airflow and allowing that AMP Mark II regulator to work more efficiently. For me, that plenum is a pressurized connection and I'm not taking it apart. I know, I know there are people out there that you can say you can do all the barrel swapping and stuff like that, but if it goes wrong, I've got nothing to review, so I'm not taking it apart. The shroud, I estimate, covers the entire barrel, which is 500 mil. I don't see from measuring any internal baffling in that end, so you will need to add a moderator. The rifle is powered by the carbon bottle. We've seen these many times before, which is removable and swappable with different sizes at an extra cost out of your pocket. And the layout of that connection just there is different to the Panthera. Above it, FX have added two 55mm Picatinny rails so you can put your toys onto. On the left, there are some gauges just there, wicker ones at an angle. Top one is the regulator and bottom one is the bottle. Something to note is that finish and tight tolerance there on the stock around the fittings. There's no huge gaps. The wood actually tucks behind those gauges. Just behind the gauges is the quick tune system, a 23 point hammer wheel adjuster, which must not be adjusted while the rifle is cocked. In front of that, the small wheel, the micro adjuster has been removed. It would be somewhere there as this is sub 12. However, for fine tuning, I can see the adjuster screw for an Allen tool. Uh, it's there, but let's be clear, we have laws. If you stray outside of them, that's your doing. Also, as with anything like this, warranties do not apply when things are tampered with. And let me tell you, they know when you've tampered. It's the same with the regulator. Tamper, and you get no warranty or free fix. And a shouty email saying, it came like that, just doesn't work anymore, all right? So I am just saying. Now, something standalone hunting YouTubers have to be able to do is film a good fake stalk. And I don't wanna let the side down this morning. <gasps> Look out, big sticky branch. Oh no, Instagram moment. I've got to get under it. Under we go. Oh, I've made it. Right, something I want to talk about is this little slider just on the side, which is part of the quick tune system, which is part of the hammer system on the rifle. Now, uncocked, that slider just there moves up and down. It's sort of free floating when it's uncocked. Some people have said that with it moving around, it's way too loud. I tend to disagree. I've just walked from there to here and haven't heard it once. And also that big pride of lions over there that I'm just trying to get a look at this morning, they haven't heard me come in either. But I just wanted to cover it and let you know that with the rifle uncocked, that little hammer slider, does move up and down, but I don't think it's gonna give you away. What's that? No lions in England? Of course there are, look, over there. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> the trigger is fully adjustable with a blade that can be moved up and down and can rotate, and it's set just right for me out of the box. Lovely two-stage, crisp and repeatable in brake and that's surrounded by this new metal guard, and it looks very nice. To fully access all the trigger adjustment, you have to take this guard off, which means undoing this bolt here. And then very carefully, sort of lifting up and backwards, ever so gently, removing the trigger guard. You can then see where the trigger adjustments can be made. 
There are those of you out there that will still be screaming, show me that regulator. Well, with the trigger guard off, you can see it. You can't reach it. It's nestled under the stock at the back. The only way to reach it is to remove the stock. And I'm not doing that. On the right side is the side lever action. It's smooth and not spring loaded from what I can see. With the action ending parallel with the rear of the block. Unlike the crown, no pin extrudes from the back. Everything is contained internally. Now they say it's swappable. There is a cutout on the left, you know, for the side lever loading lever. The manual shows how you can do the swap. However, the right-handed stock has a bit too much wood just there for the cocking lever to reset correctly, like that. So you may need a left-handed stock or a smaller lever grip uh, to allow for that bit of wood there. But yes, if you want to swap that on a right-handed stock, you might have to be a little bit creative. The magazine is the deeper style Mega Mags. Because this is 177, it's 22 shot. And they have the thicker lid. And when you buy spares of these magazines, uh, you get the thin lid for the Crown and the Dreamline and stuff like that. And then you get the thick lid uh, for the Panthera or the King. It's to allow for a larger breech cutout. And that allows for longer ammunition for like slugs and things like that but it still works absolutely fine with pellets. The top rail, Picatinny, is numbered on the rear section and it's got 30 MOA built in. So it's ideal for longer range shooting. It's also a little bit bigger than the Panthera one, I think, to help with that magazine. Now the scope has to be higher. A low scope setup is not going to work. You need to allow for approximately 18 to 20 mil above the rail to get the scope to clear the magazine. Thus, either a high or adjustable mount works fine. I have my Titan on top uh, using Eagle Vision adjustable mounts and it works a treat. With the higher mount, the adjustable cheek piece comes into play and I reckon it goes up and down by approximately 25 mil using the push button lock system. And yes, it will lock in different small increments up and down. The rear shoulder pad adjusts in and out, and I reckon it gives around an extra 35 mil of adjustment. Again, it use that, uses that push button system, and it stops at increments along the way. And it's a toolless adjustment, and it works really, really well. It's firm, and actually, some would say kind of over-engineered, which is nice from GRS. So well done, Oscar. I cannot seem to remove the cheek piece or the shoulder pad while holding the button in, so it's not going to fall out while you're out and about. So you're not going to suddenly realize that you've dropped a bit along the way. And that GRS stock sweeps beautifully across the rifle. And it allows for a lovely thumb up position when you're shooting. However, there is something I do need to point out with this stock, okay? It's perfect in the shooting position. If you're in the bench walking around, or whatever, it's absolutely brilliant because where you're gripping the rifle here and your thumb goes there, you're naturally pulling that rifle into your shoulder and it makes it super comfortable. In fact, it's one of the best I've ever felt for that. For walking around with in the field, it's, it's I'm only holding it up because of the camera angle. It's just a little odd. You, you feel like you want to grip more on this side, just here. You feel like there should be more to it so you can curl your hand round. So, when you go into the shop and you pick this up for the first time, you're gonna go, oh, oh, that's a little different to hold. Yes, it is. And it takes a while to get used to it. And holding the rifle is quite a vital part of the whole reason that you've got the rifle is like you've got to carry it properly and be comfortable with it. But don't let that fool you Bring it into the shooting position and you'll see why it's designed like it is. It's an observation and I've got to point it out. Um, there we go, carry on. On the bottom is a Foster filling port and some screws to remove the stock. However, 
I would say the finish and tight tolerances on the GRS stock means removing it must be done with caution. Okay, it's too nice to bash about and get it wrong. You would also need to remove the embedded safety switch on the right there, look. And I fear that you're gonna scratch it, okay? And when you start scratching it and you start getting stuck, you're gonna stand there and say, do you know what, I, I really, really wish I hadn't started doing this. With all those refinements, unless you have a side-mounted bipod, I've still had to revert to a trusty Sabre Tactical 60mm bottle clamp for the bipod because there's no rail anywhere else. Plus, there's no way of mounting a sling without doing some drilling. I have to admit, it's a shame that it didn't arrive with some studs in situ. Now, I'm going to be picky, but this is a beautiful sporter rifle. It's going to get laid down in the field or the barn, and I would be hesitant about doing that on the left side because of those gauges. And I think I've said this before. So if anyone is listening, uh, maybe a bracket to allow for some smaller flush gauges on the side, an aftermarket thing or something like that. It's just a thought. And price, look, I'm making this video in December 2023. The video will be online for years. The price is going to change. Uh, so just do a Google or ask your RFD. It's not a budget banger, it's top end. But if you're watching this in five years time, you're gonna say, well, that's not how much that rifle is now. No, no, go and have a look. I'm going to get asked, can I convert my Panthera or my Compact or my Dynamic into this? I've no idea. I've not been given that information, not at all. And having a shop, I get access to order codes and things from stock and stuff like that and I've not seen anything listed. I'm not saying that it's not possible, and I'm not saying that it's not gonna happen in the future. But what I'm saying is from what I've seen on the system, there aren't the bits to order right now. And after all them words and my waffle, is it accurate? Well, let's find out. I've got several hours of footage of accuracy, of which I'm not going to cut in now because you will all lose the will to live if you just watch me chucking pellets down range. So I'm going to give you my learnings. If you have no wind, zero wind, no nothing, nothing at all wind-wise, you want to use the JSB Expresses. Uh, they're the Express Diablo 787 in uh, 177s. Because with those, you can get an awful lot of one-hole groups. That is with no wind, mind you. If the wind gets up, you want to change to the heavies, 10.34, and then at sort of 54 yards in a breeze, you can get everything under a 5p coin. I've done a lot of pellet testing at 54 yards. Why 54 yards? Well, that's because that's the distance between my chair, well, the front of the gun, and the metal plate down there. And it's warm in here and it's minus two out there. So that's why I do it here. Anyway, I've found pellets that don't work. And I'm not gonna name them because they might work in someone else's rifle. Then I found ones that really, really, really don't work. Then I start to find a little bit of something going on. And then I find the magic source right there. And I repeat that magic source test on another target and I get four through the same hole just there with a little flyer above there. And that is an oh, 844 4.52 JSB pellet. And you're gonna ask me, what's that secret source? And I'm gonna say, well, actually I spoke to Donnie over at Donnie FL, who makes the moderators. And he said, you can make all sorts of changes if you add and remove these baffles at the end look, cause they are, it sort of comes apart and you can change the length. So I just took two baffles out to make it a little bit shorter, put the 844s in, I got four through the same hole at 54. So I haven't tuned the actual gun, I've done nothing to it, it's factory standard, sub 12 foot pound, all I've done is take some bits on and off that moderator and 
wallop. There we go. Is it accurate? Very much so. With a big caveat, and this goes for any air rifle. Pellet testing, pellet testing, pellet testing. It's two weeks, two, three weeks I've been shooting this to get myself set and know exactly what it likes. I haven't even adjusted the internals of the gun. I haven't touched it. It's as it came out of the box. The only thing I've done is taken a bit off the moderator. And with all that testing, I get that. So there we are. Power-wise, I'm running somewhere between 740 and 750 feet per second. That's 10.3 to 10.5 foot-pounds with a 8.44, 4.52 pallet JSB. 10.5 foot-pounds with an 844 pallet. Maybe that explains why it likes the Expresses. They're 787, 7.87, I think, uh, which gives it that little bit more speed. But with 10.5 foot-pounds, it does just go to prove that you don't need all that extra oomph because I'm still dropping one pellet on top of the other at 54 yards. It really is down to the pellet choice. Is it consistent with that speed? Absolutely, I'm very happy with that. Is there scope and the ability to move that a little bit? Mm, possibly, possibly. Would I? Probably not. I think my phrase is, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. The hammer spring power wheel on the side has got stages from 1 to 23, or 23 to 1, whichever way you want to look at it. And on my sub 12 177, that gives me approximately 200 feet per second of adjustment. It's going to vary rifle to rifle and depending on what pellet you're using. One thing though, do not adjust that wheel when the rifle is cocked. It's quite calm here where I'm sat in the field. It's early in the morning, about just got nine o'clock, I think. Uh, and I wanted to experiment whether I was going to do better with the expresses or the heavies at 100 yards. The really weird thing is, is that I've taken another segment out of the moderator at the front and the expresses are working best, which is the lighter pellet. And like I say, while it's calm here, there is a good breeze down there at 100 yards. So this is all ballistic stuff that I'm learning and experimenting with. But I'm knocking tins over with ease, with a bit of windage, at 100 yards. Let me show you. Ha! There's one. First shot. There we go. And it, it literally zonks off the target. Let's dial over. A little bit more. A little bit more. Give this one a go. <laughs> there you go. Come down a little bit more. There it is. Eventually we got there. That was five or six shots. I will edit it that. I mean, because you don't watch me miss five or six times, but... Got it. There you go. Now, I've got to be clear. Let me just decock the rifle. I haven't adjusted this at all. The only reason I've turned this is for the video so that you can see what the power levels are. I haven't touched this and I'm still shooting at like 100 yards. So this is exactly as it's come out of the box. No tinkering, no special FX-isms or anything like that. It is as I got it out of the box from the UK distributor. Shot count is a tricky one because I haven't actually counted. No, I haven't. Um, in four weeks, I haven't actually sat and counted how many magazines I've put through it each time from each charge. What I would say is that if I fill it to 250 bar on the nose, literally let the dial settle at 250 bar, I reckon around 18 full magazines on full power. But if I reduced the power using the hammer adjuster, I could get a lot higher, maybe up into the 450 plus range, but it's more than enough. Now I will admit, for my long range accuracy, in fact all my accuracy testing, I've been using the Sabre Tactical Universal Pro uh, monopod at the back because it actually just helps me dial and put the rifle exactly where I want it to go. I am using an Accutac bipod at the front as well just to get the rifle steady. I would say that once you get the rifle steady and on point, it tends to stay where it, it needs to be. It's not a wobbly rifle or a top-heavy rifle or anything like that. And paired with that Titan on top, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's staggeringly good to shoot. Now, I am gonna stand here with my FX cap on. Lu Luigi, calm yourself, calm yourself, calm yourself. Now, a lot of you out there will be like Luigi and a little bit yappy over the fact that there's some new technology here. Luigi, calm, calm. But be excited. This is new technology hitting the mainstream air gun world. And if it's anything like the impact, which just got copied and copied and copied by all sorts of manufacturers out there, the technology in this is going to get copied. Calm, calm yourself, Luigi, calm. So what's going to happen is, is that eventually in years to come, we'll all be using this technology. And that's a good thing. So be excited. Now, look, look, Luigi, calm yourself. He's, he's getting all up at you about, does anyone want a little yappy thing? Claire, Claire, come and take this away. You like little yappy things. Here we go. Take it away. You got him? You got him? Take him. Take him. Take him. Take him. Take him. Take, take, well, drag him. Take him. Take it. Well, he's gone. And she stuck something on my back. In conclusion then, air guns get more expensive. There's more technology in them and they all absolutely outshoot us now. And what stops us getting one whole groups at range is the elements. Wind, rain, ammo, shapes, sizes and gravity. But this thing is beautiful. You just need some air, some pellets, and something to shoot at. It's that simple. The, the right, whole thing flows from end to end. It, it just does. And while that grip is different, it is, it does grow on you and you do get used to it. It's not an impact. It's not a tactical AR looking rifle. It's a sporter. Is it the king of sporters? I think that's kind of fair. I mean, no king is perfect, and don't we know it here in the UK? It's a rifle, though, powered by air, which is what air guns are all about. Is it the best consumer sporter on the market right now, with all those bells and whistles? Well, yes, it probably is because of the technology it's got inside, but you will want to make it your own, and I might actually rename mine to the Prince of Darkness because it brings doom to everything that it sees in its sights.